Hey, what's up everyone? Back here with another comic book review. The channel's first Batman review. This is Batman issue 108. Now I'm reviewing Batman for the first time, even though I've been buying every issue since probably before Joker War, or more like at the tail end of James Tinian's first arc. Now James Tinian's a great writer. I'm so happy he took over writing duty from Tom King, because when Tom King was writing Batman, he was writing Batman like a total beta wimp, and James Tinian writes him like a total alpha. He's a total boss in this book. Jorge Jimenez, who does this issue, and he's the primary artist on this series now. He is a great artist. This series has really made me a fan of his. And it's great. Really colorful cover. This is the first appearance of this new character named Miracle Molly. And uh, they, because of that, they made a, a hundred variants for this now. They market it like crazy. And uh, I really give James Tinian credit for creating so much new characters like Punchline and Ghostmaker. But Miracle Molly doesn't really do it for me. Uh, near miss. And uh, anyway, I think we're going to hop off this series now. I'm going to get into why. So two issues ago, I think, in uh, issue 106, is, this is the start of this current arc coming back from the two-month period without any of it uh, because of Future State being a thing. And since then, it took a dip. It's just kind of boring. It's weird. I really like the plot line that he set up with Batman losing all of his wealth, all of his resources, so Batman has to go a little more streamlined and fight crime a little more crafty and in a different way, uh, And uh, but for some reason it's just not really doing it for me anymore. Uh, really cool opening shot of Scarecrow. This new look has really grown on me. I didn't like it at first because it just was too close to his look in the Arkham Asylum video games with the needles coming out of his fingers and stuff. But I really like it now, especially with the stitching on the gas mask. It looks really creepy. Cool image of the bat, and you can visually see the sound coming from its mouth. But then it gets into the, the, the boringness, you know, this very obviously corrupt mayor, very obviously corrupt businessman type who's their Steve Jobs, kind of Bill Gates analog. And then, you know, you got Barbara being Oracle again, even though she can still be Batgirl, I don't know why. Lots of talking, 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 then the introduction of Miracle Molly. Very very colorful character, but she really didn't end up being a villain for this issue. Uh, a lot of talking. She pretty much ended up being just a cyberpunk Billie Eilish, and uh, I'm not really into that. <laughs> so then uh, uh, they, there's this cool shot of them flying on this drone flying through the city, and I thought that there was going to be some cool mid-air fight breaking loose now that Batman has successfully infiltrated this group, the Unsane Collective. They're basically a bunch of anarchists, and I think we are expected to sympathize for them. I don't sympathize for them. Uh, they steal from people, and I think Batman should just start going to town on them. But that's not the case in this issue. She kind of just talks a lot and gives her side of things and, and says that how, that she explains her view on the city and how everyone's corrupt and blah blah blah. Nothing we haven't heard before. And uh, that's about it. I don't really like them because they just kind of willingly gave up their free will and erased their memories to pledge their allegiance to their leader and the Unsane Collective. Uh, so they're crazy people to me. And then you get this 10 page backup story with Ghostmaker. I love Ghostmaker. I think he looks dope. But uh, this backup story uh, doesn't really do it for me either. It kind of doesn't, uh, it, it didn't, the, the, the part one, it's uh, the backup story part one started last issue and it didn't lead into this very seamlessly. And you got this artist named Ricardo Lopez Ortiz who reminds me a lot of the Spider-Man artist Humberto Ramos, except with a more Eastern manga influence. So it doesn't really do it for me either, that art. And that's basically it. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to jump off now. It just kind of got a little, a little boring and a little weird. Uh, I like what he set up, but James Tinian now kind of reminds me of a race car driver who's going insanely fast like he's supposed to on the straightaways, but he doesn't seem to slow down at the turns. So he doesn't give the readers a whole lot of time to slow down, breathe, take it in. He's set up just plotline after plotline, and this issue focused on some pretty boring stuff, and it's kind of incoherent at this point. So uh, the good thing is there's plenty of Batman content. If there's a character that DC floods the shelf with, it's Batman, so maybe there's something else I can get into. I think I just hold DC at a higher standard because it takes a lot for some reason for me to invest into a DC book. So thank you very much for checking out this video. Comment below, tell me what you think of this Batman series, and uh, let me know uh, if you think I should stay on and uh, keep on reading. Uh, maybe I'll hop back on in the future, but yeah, this Miracle Molly character doesn't really do it for me. So thank you for watching. Bye.